Welcome to day two of the cruise use beta sailing from on board the grandeur of the seas. As I said in yesterday's episode, I'm going to be continuing to look at what's done each day and try to improve as we progress. So hopefully by day 10 and we'll have a much better product than we do on day one, two, or three. So yesterday I noticed things were a little rocky and keeping things going. So today I've got all of my notes on a second iPhone rather than trying to use the same iPhone for both the voice recording and keeping track of what's going on. So you can tell I'm outside in the back of the grandeur of the seas, an area that was actually completely gutted by the fire that occurred in May. But it's currently rather warm out, much smoother seas than we saw yesterday and especially from earlier today. Our noontime sailing was at about 34 degrees north by 75 degrees west, with the closest land being Cape Hatteras, about 46 nautical miles away from us. As I told you yesterday, we were expecting some rough seas overnight and through today, and while we did get rough seas, they were not as rough as the original 13 to 18 that were estimated, but they were still significant for a ship the size of the grandeur of the seas. Having sailed aboard the Independence of the Seas westbound transatlantic last year and experiencing 60 plus foot waves, the 13 to 18 foot waves sounded rather mild for today, but on the grandeur of the seas, those waves felt about equivalent to what we experienced on the Independence Seas. So while today's sea conditions were equivalent to the average day on that transatlantic sailing, the ship's roughness was significantly worse. It seemed as though the ship was rising and falling as much as the Independence of the Seas did in her conditions, but at a much more rapid rate that made it feel significantly worse than even the conditions on board the Independence of the Seas. Luckily though, tonight the waves are supposed to be dropping to about four to eight feet, which is about what it feels like right now, and should continue throughout tomorrow as things get warmer. So our weather for today, we had a sunrise at about 7.12 a.m. this morning, and the sunset was at 5.18 p.m. The high of today was 68 degrees, and luckily while we did have rough seas, the skies were blue and the sun was shining the entire day. Being day two, just like on most of Royal Caribbean sailings, tonight was the first formal night in the main dining room to go along with the captain's welcome aboard party. The featured spice for today was saffron, a rare Asian spice made popular in Scandinavia and often reserved for the elite. On board, it's used to enhance the flavors of many dishes. The chef's inspiration for the night features a chilled banana and rum soup and a Roman vignole salad, a pan-fried filet of barramundi for the main course, and finished with a bittersweet chocolate souffle for dessert. Now I'd like to give you a few highlights of the compass and... Just like before, you can read everything that's included in the compass alongside of your screen, but I'll just touch on a few of the highlights are out of the ordinary, as many things such as the trivia occur daily, many of which are progressive and expand upon each other every single day of the sailing. So this morning, there was a new event that I had not previously seen on board a ship before. It was titled Cooking Demonstration which has been used as the title of the Bake a Cake Challenge before. But this time it was the chefs of Izumi, Chops Grill, as well as Giovanni's Table, along with the activities director, Daryl, working to demonstrate some of the menu items offered in those venues, as well as offering samples. It's a rather entertaining event to attend. And then, of course, this evening, the big event was the captain's welcome reception, which had a surprisingly low turnout compared to this past May when the venue was overly crowded and not everybody could even fit in a good viewing location. Not sure if it was related to the weather or not, but they did not have the aerialists, so that might have kept a few people who wouldn't typically show up for it and might have been interested in those from once again not showing up for the event. And to go along with the captain's welcome aboard reception, I'd like to take a moment just to let you know a few of the key 
workers on board the ship at the moment. So of course, on a ship, the most important person is the captain, and on board currently is Tronholm, who is 51 years old and coming to us from Norway, like many of the other Royal Caribbean captains at the moment. And as passenger, the most important person is, of course, the cruise director, who is currently Jeffrey Arpin, who had sailed with Royal Caribbean since 1991, but retired about a decade ago, and occasionally comes back to do one-off contracts when Royal Caribbean is in a bind and needs some assistance. As I mentioned before, our activities manager is Daryl Dreibel, and our loyalty and cruise sales manager is Danny Leake, who is an awesome guy. We had him on board in May as well, and he's one of the few loyalty ambassadors who actually feels like he could have been a cruise director in a previous life. If you're interested in seeing any of the other staff leaders on board the ship, you can of course check out the full Welcome Aboard reception video, which they introduce all of them. The evening activity was the Finish That Lyric Game Show, held in the Centrum and once again hosted by Daryl. As I mentioned yesterday, tonight we have the first of our venue tours, and it is the Centrum, a rather fitting venue following the captain's welcome reception. From the grand staircases of the early ocean liners, to the sweeping spaces of the modern atriums, and the vast lengths of the royal promenades, every passenger vessel has had a central space to assist guests in moving around a ship. On the grandeur, this area is referred to as the Centrum a vast space extending from deck 4 all the way up to deck 10. Connected to the aft stairs and elevators, this area provides the only access to every deck of the ship, while featuring three decks of floor-to-ceiling windows as well as skylights above to connect the interior areas to the world sailing by outside. The three primary decks offer the majority of the ship's guest services. The main level on deck 4 acts as the primary access point for embarkation and debarkation, the starboard side features a library corner where books and board games can be signed out free of charge for use throughout the sailing, as well as the next cruise desk where the loyalty and sales ambassador can be found throughout the day to answer any questions related to crown and anchor as well as to make future cruise bookings. The forward area consists of the R-Bar, a new venue introduced as part of the recent ship revitalization program to offer an upscale specialty drink venue. During many sailings, this venue even features a mixologist who can take a person's taste preferences and mix up a custom drink to their liking. The port side features Royal Caribbean Online, an area offering guests access to computers connected to the internet as well as the ability to print. There's also wireless access available throughout the entire ship. Deck 5 is the main service area with both the main guest service desk, which is open 24 hours a day, and the shore excursions desk, which has daily hours listed in the compass. The port side of Deck 6 then features the photo gallery and shop, where any photos taken during the sailing as well as the cruise and review DVD can be purchased. The starboard side is then home to the art gallery, as well as Cafe Latitudes, which will be featured on Day 10. Deck 6 is also the location of the only freestyle coke machine that is accessible 24 hours a day. With the recent revitalization program, Royal Caribbean decided to rethink the entertainment side of the venue. They did away with the boring old piano bar lobby feel and turned their focus to the popular Royal Promenade of the larger ships to introduce what they referred to as the vertical promenade. This new way of thinking viewed the Centrum as not just a means of moving around the ship, but as a third entertainment venue. Deck 4 was cleared to allow room for various games and activities to take place throughout the day and night, as well as the introduction of full bands to fill the ship with life and offer a dancing space throughout the evenings. Unlike the Royal Promenade, which features a massive area for guests to fill, the Centrum has to spread its crowds vertically over the six decks. The traditional promenade relied heavily on its advanced ceiling and lighting systems to enhance the atmosphere. For the same reason, the Centrum now features a pair of monitor towers that can display any pattern needed 
as well as an advanced LED lighting system to bring every floor of the space to life. Using these new lighting systems combined with an advanced sound system, they can utilize the Centrum to host popular promenade street parties and get the energy flowing throughout all of the decks. To further take advantage of the vertical space, the new Centrum experience includes the addition of aerialists. The performers, along with the Royal Caribbean singers and dancers, put on a third full production show during each sailing. There is also a pair of standalone songs that they perform, often with other events such as the Captain's Welcome Reception. All of these events, like everything else in the Centrum, can be viewed from any deck, but these, more than any other, offer a completely different experience depending on the location you choose. The modern Centrum is much more than a means of getting around the ship. It is the pulse of the ship, setting the mood for everything else on board. Hope you enjoyed day two of the sailing, and thanks for watching. Of course, I'm Derek Cohn. You can follow me at DM Picone, and be sure to subscribe for more videos as well as the rest of the days of the sailing, and stay tuned for the links as usual.